In the name of Allah, may peace and salutations be upon our Prophet and upon his family and companions to the day of resurrection to proceed. Hadith number 29 on the authority of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, tell me of an act which will take me into paradise and will keep me away from the fire. He, peace and blessings be upon him, said, You have asked me about a great matter, yet it is one that is easy for those whom Allah makes it easy. Worship Allah without associating any partners with him. Establish the prayer, pay the zakah, the charity, fast in Ramadan, and make pilgrimage to the house. Then he, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Shall I not guide you towards the means of goodness? Fasting is a shield. Charity wipes away sin as water extinguishes fire, and the praying of a man in the depths of the night. Then he, peace and blessings be upon him, recited, Those who forsake the ayah in the Qur'an, those who forsake their beds to invoke their Lord in fear and hope, and they spend charity in Allah's cause out of what we have bestowed upon them. No person knows what is hidden for them of joy as a reward of what they used to do. Then he, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Shall I not inform you of the head of the matter, its pillar and its peak? I said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. He, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The head of the matter is Islam. Its pillar is the prayer and its peak is jihad. Then he, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Shall I not tell you of the foundation of all of that? I said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. So he took hold of his tongue and he said, Restrain this. I said, O Prophet of Allah, will we be taken, taken into account for what we say with it? He, peace and blessings be upon him, said, May your mother be bereft of you, O Mu'adh. Is there anything that throws the people into the hellfire upon their faces or upon their noses? Accept the harvests of their tongues. It was related by Tirmidhi, who said it was a good and sound hadith. So this is a lengthy hadith which takes, which has many many points of benefit, um, and there is um, a, a good deal of depth of explanation um, of this hadith. Um, so in this hadith, we see that Mu'adh ibn Jabal um, he asked the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him, about actions that will benefit him, and actions that would enter him the Jannah, the Paradise, and the Paradise is the place which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has prepared and created for his righteous slaves. In it, there is that which no eye has seen, nor has any ear heard, and the, the likes of which has never even been imagined upon the hearts of people. And actions, conversely, that would take him away from the fire. And the fire is the place which Allah Azza wa Jal has created and prepared for those who disbelieve in him. And in it is a tremendous torture and punishment. And it is something that is known um, well in the book and the sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us with the, the paradise and may he grant us staying away from the fire. So he asked about this due to the importance of this matter and it's appropriate for every believer for this to be their utmost priority to do those things that enter them into the Jannah and take them away from the fire. As I mentioned there are many points of benefit um, in this hadith um, so what we will do we'll have a look at just some of the fawaid the benefits of the hadith rather than the explanation um, because that will be long um, so from the benefits of the hadith we see the um, the enthusiasm of the sahaba in wanting to do those actions and know those actions that would admit them into the paradise and take them away from the fire one of the benefits as well is that we believe in the paradise and the fire and it's the belief of the people of the sunnah that they are created and they are there now. They are created and they exist at the moment and they will never cease to exist. They are eternal abodes. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us the highest of the paradise. From them, the benefits of the hadith is that the question was a very, very good question. And for this reason, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, you have just asked about a great matter. So it shows the um, importance of this matter. However, 
despite the fact that it's important, it was something that's easy for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for. So again, this is something that we should ask Allah to make easy for us, to seek the paradise and to distance ourselves from the fire. From the benefits of the hadith is that the first thing that a person should do and the greatest thing is to make tawheed or oneness of Allah and have sincerity in their religion to Allah where the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said um, worship Allah without associating any partners with him and then following this um, he mentioned the other pillars and if it is said where is the shahada the second shahada the second testification that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah then we can say that it's it's something that's known um, through the statement worship Allah and do not associate partners with him and we benefit from this hadith that zakah is mentioned first before fasting charity is mentioned before fasting because it's something that is more emphasized and also that fasting is mentioned before hajj because the fasting it's something that repeats every year whereas the hajj its obligation is only upon an individual once in their lifetime and we see from the benefits of this hadith the reiteration of the pillars of al-Islam. So they are mentioned here. We also see some of the teaching of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, where he asked a question to the questioner. Shall I not, shall I not point you to the doors of goodness? Um, and this was to create anticipation and a desire to learn on part of the questioner. And Allah knows best, and may peace and blessings be upon our Prophet and upon his family and companions to the Day of Resurrection.